Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Fairport Christian Fellowship. How are you all doing today? Good, brother. Good. good. All right. It's good to see you. Beautiful summer day. Uh, our opening verses today, Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. I do want you to sing with grace in your hearts today. As we sing, feel the favor of the Lord as you sing. That's what it means to sing with grace in your heart, knowing that He favors you and He's pleased. I, we all need to feel that, you know that? But especially today, twice it says that we should give thanks and be very thankful. I don't know what your attitude is today. I don't know what kind of attitude you woke up with today. I know what kind of attitude I woke up with. I was kind of like, <sighs> you know, not bad, not good, just, <sighs> you know, but it didn't take me long, you know to start thinking about the great things that the Lord has done for myself, my wife, my family, and it changed my attitude. You know, gratitude has the word attitude in it. And so not just today at church do I want you to have an attitude of gratitude, but I want you to practice that all week long. No matter what you are experiencing physically, mentally, spiritually, all the way around, <clears throat> I want you to turn your eyes towards the Lord and give thanks to Him today. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank You. We thank You, Lord God, that You have done so much for us. If we look backwards, oftentimes we look forwards and we get, uh, you know, I, I don't know, we get down. But Lord, when we look backwards to see the things that you have done in our lives and how you have just blessed us and saved us and given to us a future and a hope, Lord, it, it just kind of changes the way we think and the way we feel. So Lord, I pray that we would do that today. You are worthy of all of our praise and all of our thanksgiving today. We pray this today in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if you stand with me today, you don't have to stand. If you want to sit, that's fine. Um, if you can and if you're able and if you desire to, stand with me as we worship. But at what, what, whether you sit or whether you stand, I want you to lift up your hearts to the, to the Lord and be glad. Amen. Be glad today. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Let's praise the Lord. gave up your place in heaven, you gave all you could give, most of all you died for me, you died so I could live, no greater love the world has seen from beginning to the end, when you lay down your life for your
Greater love the world has seen from beginning to the end. When you lay down your life for your friends. Now the Father looks at me just like He looks at you. Forever I will always see your faithful and your true. No greater love the world has seen from beginning to the end. When you lay down your life for your friends, you give to me your mercy and strength so I can cope. A future, you give to me a hope. No greater love the world has seen from beginning to the end. When you lay down your life for your friends, you gave up your place in heaven. You gave all you could give. Most of all, you died for me. You died so I could live. No greater love the world has seen from beginning to the end. When you lay down your life for your friends. No greater love the world has seen. From beginning to the end, when you lay down your life for your friends, when you lay down your life for your friends, when you lay down your life for your friends. the cross, at the cross, 
done for us amen he was on the cross and one of the last things that's recorded that he said is to tell us die which means it is finished paid in full we don't have to do anything we've been justified before God by the blood of Jesus Christ isn't that amazing that's awesome there's nothing we can do and he did it for us amen
Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Change my heart, oh God. Yes, Father, that's why we're here, Lord. We're here to be changed by you, Lord God, to be more like in your in your image, Lord God. And uh, Father, we just pray that by your spirit, Lord, that you would change us to be more like Jesus Christ, Lord. We can't do it in our own power, but we have power from you. And Lord, I just pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would bless us, help us, Lord God, to enter into your word, to, to, to focus on what you would say to us today. Lord, I also pray that you would just give power to pastor, power to us all, Lord God, to receive and hear and give what would please you and what is pleasing in your uh, sight and in your hearing, Lord. And we just ask for these things this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Let's all greet one another. I didn't expect you to be quiet so soon. You must be really anticipating the message. And I like that. You have an attitude of expectation and hope. Yes, it's going to be good. Okay, well, before that, though, we have announcements. <clears throat> Next Saturday, there will be a men's breakfast here at 9 o'clock in the, you know, not 10 o'clock like the ladies, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. <laughs> Men's breakfast, so all guys, you know, I hope that you can be here. Uh, also, next Sunday after church, we're having a church picnic uh, at 85 Chardonnay Drive. That's uh, in Fairport, so and we, if you need a map, we can, we can get you that. Uh, but we've had this, we've had picnic there before, and you will have also the opportunity, if you want to be baptized, just, just let me know, and we can do that. We have the... Uh, we have the water. We, we, you know, I think it was two years ago, it, it really rained, and we could have baptized in a big puddle. <laughs> we, we had rented a big tent, and the water was right in the tent, you know, so like we couldn't sit there. <laughs> also, I want to uh, uh, invite anybody, uh, Friday night, we have Bible study here at 7.30. I call it Friday Night Light. We have been going through the uh, book of James. Uh, we've made it all the way to James chapter 4. 
But I won't be doing that this week. I'm further expounding on this attitude of gratitude that the Lord has threw on me this morning. Attitude of gratitude. Like I said, I want you to be in an attitude of gratitude all week long. Start your day that way, especially if you wake up grouchy or anything like that. You know, you have to uh, you get a, you can't stay there. You've got to have an attitude of thanksgiving and praise to the Lord, you know. And so I will be talking about that. Uh, and one of my favorite scriptures is in the Old Testament with, where David, in 2 Samuel 7, says that he wants to build the house of the Lord. It's not right that I live in a palace and the, the, the Ark of the Covenant is re residing in a tent. And he had it in his heart to build the house of the Lord. But the prophet Nathan stopped him because the Lord told Nathan to tell him. But God had said to him, it was good enough that it was in your heart to build my house. I'm going to build your house. And David went in and sat before the Lord and said, who am I and what is my house that you've brought me to this place? And now you're talking about a royal dynasty. The Messiah is coming from me. And I don't see that any different from us. You know, we can say that. I hope you do go in this week and sit before the Lord and say, who am I? What is my house? That you, you have blessed me and you brought me to where I am today. And now you're talking about my future. I'm, I'm getting into Friday night light before I should. But that's what I'm going to be talking about, okay? So please, if you haven't come on a Friday night before, be, consider yourself invited, all right? Man, and I, I pray all week long you will, uh, you will understand the blessings of God's goodness to you, and that will make you exceedingly glad, okay? We also worship in giving. The scripture that I have on the wall is <clears throat> Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. And it kind of goes along with this attitude of gratitude thing, you know. If you're going to give today, give with thanksgiving. That's what it says. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations it's still good today you want to know where truth is <clears throat> i don't know if you can turn on the tv and find it okay in fact i'm i do know you can't but i do know where you can find truth it's in his word and it lasts for all eternity and so if you're going to give today hey give with a thankful heart he's been good to you hasn't he you're here today you all look good you're all you have clothes on and everything. You probably had a, a choice of what you're going to wear today. That's a blessing. Many do not. So let's give thanks. As I pray before we get into the message, I want to uh, highlight also, <clears throat> there are people missing today. Physically, Bernice is not doing well today. Don York is not doing well. There's others too. Raise your hands if you need a touch from the Lord, you know, just... Okay, all right, yeah, good. Well, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for that today before I get into the message. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for everything. You are our all in all. We can come to you with anything. So, Lord, I do pray for this body in general. I've me mentioned people's names, and you've seen the hands that were raised. I do pray that you will bring health and healing renewal of spirit soul and body today restore lord god and heal stretch out your hand to your people and let them sense your healing touch today what whatever it may be a physical thing an emotional thing a spiritual thing lord whatever it may be you know You've come to heal the brokenhearted. And so I pray that you would do that today, Lord, in our midst. In our midst today, we would sense that. Whether it's during the service or throughout this day, 
bring healing and health to this body. And I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. You can turn in your Bibles today to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Now, I know that, uh, you know, we've been going through Genesis. We're going to finish up, and I'm going to tell you right now, I already know where we're going after this. We're going to probably finish Genesis by September, and we are going to turn to the New Testament and go to the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. So we'll begin that. And, you know, it would be good for you to read ahead. And maybe you say to yourself, well, I've already read Matthew. We'll read it again. And again and again and again. I just feel like, you know, we need, that's where the Lord wants us to go. The, the first book of the New Testament. And most likely, I'll turn on Friday nights from, after we get done with James, we will get to, we'll go right on through to Exodus. So we can continue from Genesis to Exodus in that way. Okay, and if you don't usually come on Friday nights, you can come, but it's on YouTube also, so check it out. Mark chapter 1, today I wanted to speak to you, I felt, feel like the Lord said that he wanted to say this, it's about baptism. Since we are going to have the opportunity, I want to make sure everybody understands, and maybe you already do, it's a reminder, or you can um, be, if somebody asks you what it's all about. You can explain to them. But Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11, and I want you to know that uh, <clears throat> before the New Testament, before Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels, the last book of the Old Testament was Malachi. It was written 400 years before the New Testament, before Jesus. 400 years. 400 years. And they like to say that there, those were 400 years of God being silent. Is, do you sometimes feel like God's quiet? He's not talking to you. He's not saying something, you know? Well, then this comes. Then John the Baptist comes. Then Jesus comes. And God speaks. And that's what we're going to cover today. The first thing is about water baptism. Mark chapter 1, verse 4. Uh, let me read, John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. And now you may know about John the Baptist. I'm not going to go into detail about his life, but God said there was, he was going to send a forerunner, a witness, to bear witness to the light, to bear witness to the Messiah that's coming. And John the Baptist is that one. But it says here, he came... He was in the wilderness. That's where he lived. You see what kind of clothes he wore, what he had, what he ate, what, were, what his menu was. Locusts and wild honey. Hmm. Well, we don't, we don't have to go there, do we? But I guess the biggest thing that I want you to see that he, be, he came preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, and along with that was the confessing of sins. Like I mentioned before, there had been 400 years, and there was a, an established religious system of priests and Pharisees and such. And the people were used to the, those kind of people teaching them the Word of God. When Jesus came along, or when John the Baptist came along, it was something new and something different. It brought life to everything. And they responded to his message of repentance and confessing. And then he began to baptize them in the River Jordan. Now, baptisms weren't really in the Old Testament at all. They did, ex they did have a baptism, a cleansing, washing that they used to have, ritual washings for the priests. But this, what they're talking about here, they, use, they, 
they reserved this for Gentiles that were being converted to Judaism, that they would be baptized. Well, now John the Baptist is giving it to the Jewish people. They need to be forgiven. They need to confess their sins. You, you ever felt like that? I mean, I know that you have. We have a conscience, don't we? And we do know, we don't even need the word of God. God gives us a conscience. We know when we failed. And, we, and it's what you should do is respond to that and just go, go confess. Do you need to confess to me? No, you, you, you need to confess to the Lord. That's all you need to do. And, and John is giving this message of it's a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And the baptism simply means to immerse or overwhelm. Okay, that's why, you know, we do a full immersion. We put you in the water and bring you up out, you know, and it represents something. That's what I'll talk about. But John was giving this message, and he was also pointing to Jesus. You saw that, right? In verse 7, there comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. So he's, he's pointing to Jesus in all of this. Baptism becomes more meaningful when Jesus comes along. He begins to preach the same message of repentance. And he did baptize people like John the Baptist did. The scripture that's on the wall is John chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, so that you know I'm telling you the truth. It says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples. So we see that Jesus was affirming the message that John was giving, a message of repentance from sins, remission of sins, and confessing their sins. People were coming. They were responding to the message. Of course, religious leaders were all around, and they weren't accepting this message at all. They were rejecting it. They felt like they were already clean, and they didn't need to be clean. But the other people, most people were saying, I need to respond to this. I feel this way. I need to be cleansed. I need to be forgiven. It's good to be forgiven. Blessed is the man or woman who's forgiven, whose iniquity has been removed. David would write that. And it's good to be able to do that. So people were responding to this message. It's a message that needs to go continuously. Did, are you saying to yourself today, did I have to come to church to listen to this? Yes, you did. I, I, this is the message that I, can, I need to continue. John the Baptist, Jesus himself, others. It's a message that the whole world needs to hear. A message of repentance and confessing of sins. And like I said, Jesus affirms John's message by baptizing himself. Although his disciples the one were, were the ones that were doing it. He was overseeing it. Mark chapter 1, verse 15, Jesus says these words, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That's a simple message that continues today. Repent. Repentance, there it is. Oh, did I have to come to church on Sunday to hear that I need to repent? Yeah. Yeah. It's a message of repentance. We, is it such a bad word? It's not really a bad word at all, but it, the world has given it a bad word. Repent. Well, it just means to change your direction. Is there something wrong with changing your direction? If you know you're going in the wrong direction, is there something wrong with that? Responding to a, hey, you just need to change the way you think and the way you're going. That's what it means to repent. Repent and believe in what? The gospel. What is the gospel? Could you tell me today what the gospel is? I mean, I can tell you, but I'm the pastor. I should know what the gospel is. So should you. The gospel is very simple, and you can say it in your own words. You've come to the place, people need to come to the place where they realize they need a Savior, that they are a sinner, 
and sinner, sinning results in death, and therefore they need a Savior, and Jesus came. That's good news. That's the gospel. That's not the only good news about the gospel. He came to save us from our sins. He paid for our sins, as John mentioned during, that, the, during the, the worship. He paid for our sins. He died on the cross. Did he stay there? What happened? Don't forget that the stone was rolled away. The stone was rolled away, and the angel sat on it. It was not for him to get out. It was for us to get in and see that he is not there. He is risen. Happy Easter. <laughs> That's it. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. It's good news. People need to hear it. Have you noticed that our world is filled with violence? Oh filled with violence all over the place they need to hear the good news and the good news is matthew 28 19 and 20 on the wall jesus said this before he ascended to the heavens he he was resurrected he spent 40 days you know in and out with his disciples things like that and before he ascended to heaven he gave instructions and these are the instructions. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to, commit, to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age amen that those were his last instructions go and baptize go and baptize so he's affirming that message of repentance in baptizing and to teach them all the things Teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. That's what we're doing today, teaching. But it is a message of repentance that every one of us needs to come to. And then when we come to that, we may want to be baptized. Now, let me just tell you, if you've never been baptized, but you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not a deal breaker that you weren't baptized. The thief on the cross, is he in heaven with Jesus? Was he baptized? No. So it's not a deal breaker, but it is a very good thing to do. Okay? Next scripture on the wall, Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. This is after Jesus is gone and, and the disciples have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter gives a message and 3,000 people get saved that day they had asked him after he preached that message what should we do what what is it we should do they were they were convicted just like the people that said to john yeah i want to be baptized i need to confess my sins i need to be cleansed you know the same kind of conviction came over those that were hearing the message and they said what shall we do oh no what can i do peter said to them Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for what? The remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children. Who is listening, you know, those guys that are listening that day to Peter preach that. So this message is for you and to your children is to end there. No, it goes on. And to all who are afar off, I'm looking at you guys. You are afar off. 2,000 years later. The message is the same. The promise is for you too. All, uh, to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. 
And he puts the invitation out to every man and every woman. It's up to us to respond to the message. But there is a message. It's a consistent message. It does not change. There is nothing new. People are always looking for something new, aren't they? Can't we have a different message, Pastor? No. <laughs> no. No, this is the message. It's a message that John the Baptist gave. It's a message that Jesus gave. It's a message that Peter gave. The rest of the apostles gave. And all pastors and teachers from that time should be continuing to give this message. It's a message of repentance for the remission of sins. You know, when John the Baptist was baptizing, they did not know Jesus yet. That had to be revealed even more. We have this knowledge already. We weren't like those people that John was baptizing until he pointed to Jesus. And Jesus gave them the gospel. And then he demonstrated the gospel by going to the cross. We look backwards and we can see the full picture, can't we? So we really ought to be able to we need to respond to that message of the remission of sins. Now, Christian baptism, once you've realized that it's about Jesus, is like John's message of repentance in the sense that it demonstrates repentance, but it is also more Christian baptism. It is being baptized into Christ that it is into his death and his resurrection. They didn't have that knowledge, those people that were responding to John. But we do. That's what Christian baptism is. When you're baptized, when you, when you stand there in the, in the water, and if, when I baptize, I give people an opportunity. Most of them don't take it, but I give them an opportunity. You want to say anything? Because really, you are saying something today. I identify with Jesus. I identify that he paid for the price for my sins. He died on a cross, but he was risen. That's what baptism is. Down in the water and back up a new person. You're identifying with him. And you know, people, it's good to be baptized because it gives you a line of demarcation. Do you know what I mean by that? Some people in their lives need a marker. This is when my life changed. This is the day. It's a new day. I was this way. Now I'm going this way. I, I like the song that we usually sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. You guys know that song? Should we sing it right now? No. Maybe at the end. Maybe I'll sing it to you. I think, I, I think the words are going to be up there. But maybe you guys want to sing it to me. I have decided to follow Jesus. That's what it really comes down to. And it's not me just saying it. It's the Apostle Paul who says it in Romans chapter 6. It's on the wall. You can read it for yourself. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. It's a new day. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. That's what the baptism, water baptism, baptism is all about. The old man comes up new. The old person. You know, you've decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. But let's go back to Mark chapter 1 and read on verses 8 through 11. <clears throat> John the Baptist says, I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So we see Jesus come onto the scene. Did, did Jesus need to be baptized? No, he did not need to be baptized but he does it as an example this is a good thing for you to do follow my example so he said that to john in another place but notice what he what john says in verse 8 i indeed baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the holy spirit and we see the example as jesus went, came up out of the water what the spirit descending upon him like a dove John witnessed this, and he heard the voice of God from heaven. You are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Am I being blasphemous if I say this today? I think that you and I, men and women, we need to be able to hear that voice to us. I think many, many people suffer christians suffer because they don't know that the father is pleased they they think that the father is going to smoke him i was out on the golf course yesterday it was raining we were sitting in a golf cart it was pouring rain some of us heard a little thunder but we didn't do anything and then a lightning bolt and thunder at the same time. How close was it? The guy who was in the cart with me, he didn't say anything. He just put the foot on the pedal, and we went. We got out of there quick. But people think that that's what God's all about. Ready to, you know, strike him. There is a day of his wrath, I will tell you that. It's in, it's in the Word. But before that, we are in the age of grace, aren't we? Unmerited favor. It's the same thing. I'm well pleased. Does he make any junk? Did he, did he create you in your mother's womb? Was he, was he making junk? No. He wired us all. And he, 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 he said, man, I, I love this. I, lo I love what I'm doing here. This one's going to have these color eyes. This one, this color hair. They're going to be able to sing or they're going to be able to do this or that. So many different things. He gives all those gifts. And we need to hear and feel and sense his pleasure. He, I don't think he just says it to his son, Jesus. He says it to all of us. We need to feel that. But I'm getting off course here. We're talking about baptism. And John says, hey, I, I came to baptize you with water, but Jesus, he comes to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? First the thing that I have to explain to you, if you don't already know this, <clears throat> is that the first thing is to be born again. Okay? You guys know John 3, 5. As he's speaking to Nicodemus, Jesus says to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. How imperative is it for someone to be, to have the Holy Spirit? And how do you get the Holy Spirit? Repent and believe. And when you do, the Holy Spirit is given to you. You may feel it. You may not feel a thing. But that doesn't stop the fact. The fact is, is that the Bible tells us that he gives you his spirit and you begin to be a temple. That's what the next scripture says. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? You know, there's Old Testament scriptures about the temple of God, right? Now, I remember Ezekiel. If you read Ezekiel 8, 9, and 10, boy, oh boy, uh, the Holy Spirit was leaving the temple. Why was he leaving the temple? Because there was all kinds of junk in there. All kinds of things going on behind the scenes, behind the walls. You know, the priests were doing. 
And God said, I'm leaving. But does he do that with you? No. We are a temple. You know, remember Jesus? Did he come to cleanse the temple? What did he do? Knock down the tables? My father's house should be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. That's a physical house, but he's telling us when we believe that our bodies become a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides in us. I'm sorry that I have to tell you the terminology that the world hates is being born again. It just simply means you're born of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes into you. The Holy Spirit of God. And at that point in time, you may realize that there's a war going on. Before the Holy Spirit comes into you, there was no war. You just did whatever you felt like doing. And you thought, hey, it's, all, it's okay. But now the Spirit of God comes in, and all of a sudden a little voice says, wish you wouldn't do that. We go ahead and do it anyhow. <laughs> and then again we do it. Finally, you know, he's very patient. He never leaves. I just want to tell you that. He will not leave you. He will not leave you. And as long as you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to have, those ba- you're going to have a battle between the flesh and the fleshly desires and the Spirit of God that resides in you. It's better to just yield, but it's hard. I know this. To back that up a little, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. You notice I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. I like to do that because the scriptures, they speak for themselves. They don't need me to actually comment on them. In him, who's him? Jesus. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Did you hear that? You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed. It means forever. Verse 14, who? Who? Who is who? Are we, are we looking at a Dr. Seuss book? Who's from Whoville? No. Who is the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit a person? Holy Spirit is a who. A person. Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the what? Guarantee of our inheritance. See, we have an inheritance that cannot fade away no one can take it from you. If you have a, believed in Jesus Christ, you, it cannot be taken away. You have an inheritance. What is your inheritance? It's heaven. All eternity. All eternity. Is there going to be violence there? Is there going to be pain there? Is there going to be sickness there? Can we go on and on with the things that aren't going to be there? What is going to be there? Well, we, we just don't know yet, but it's going to be good. But it's your inheritance. You didn't realize you had an inheritance, or maybe you did. Just remember that today. It, nobody can take it away. The Holy Spirit has been given to you as a down payment, a guarantee of that inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Who is the purchased possession? You are. He purchased you at the cross. With his blood. It, Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption. Hey, you guys collect uh, you know, empty bottles and take them back to Wegmans or wherever and redeem them for what? A nickel? That's what this is. We're redeemed. Until the redemption, until Jesus comes back and says, I'm collecting what I made a deposit for. Until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. And that's it. That's it. So you should have that confidence today. So we have a baptism of water. We have the Holy Spirit given to us being born again. But there's something more. Okay? 
I, I named this message baptisms, plural. Because there's more than one. It's not just a water baptism. And you can read, I can't go through it right now, but Ephesians 19, the first six verses, Paul comes to Ephesus. He finds some disciples and he asks them, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? We didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. Well, what kind of baptism did you have? Well, we had the baptism of John. So they had a limited amount of knowledge, but Paul was sent there to give them fuller knowledge. So he began to explain them, and he said to them, go read it for yourself. I'm just kind of doing it my own way. You need to be baptized in Christ Jesus. And when he baptized them, they were also filled with the Holy Spirit. Two different things. Luke 24, 49, Jesus, before he ascended, also said this, Behold, I send the promise of the fa of." of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And in Acts 1.8, it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So he says there's a promise of the Father, and that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be endued with power, clothed with power. power. means I'm going to be really strong and powerful, and like the Hulk. No. no. Power to be a light. Power to be witnesses. It's like the text that I got from Gary last night out in Sodas Point, you know? He showed me a picture of some poles down, you know, and they didn't have any power because the pole was down. He thought that I'd be interested because I used to work for RG&E. Don't you remember? I'm a gas guy. <laughs> that's the, 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 yeah, the electric side, that's the dark side, man. But, you get that picture there? He lost power. We never have to lose power. And it's not that kind of power that gives us light, you know, or, or the ability to keep the stuff in the refrigerator, right? Not that kind of power, but power to be a light to everyone around us, to be a witness, not, to, not just to speak. I mean, yeah, that comes too. You can... You can have boldness to speak the word of God to somebody, but that's not just, it's power to live. Power to be a light. He gives us that power. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, you need the Holy Spirit to do that. And so we have this thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I like what Chuck Smith said about the Holy Spirit. You know, he was talking about one of those steam engines, you know, for a train. It used to be powered by steam. It's not, it, it's power. The steam was there to run the engine, not just to blow the whistle. A lot of times, that's what churches are doing. They're just blowing the whistle. Okay, but not run, let it run the engine. That's, the, that's what I'm talking about. Holy Spirit baptism. If I baptize somebody next week, not only am I baptizing them in water, I'm praying they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And how many times can you be filled with the Holy Spirit? Just once? It's free refills. Yes. One baptism, many fillings. And sometimes we, we, I don't know, he, he does that because sometimes we leak, right? You ever feel that way? Well, go to the Lord and say, hey, I need to be filled. I'm going to tell you that the gospel can't just go out by itself. It must be brought forth in the unction of the Holy Spirit. I was just talking to John this morning about this. 
The letter of the law, Paul says in Corinthians, kills. You ever listen to somebody that's not filled with the Holy Spirit? Please get me out of here. I don't see anybody leaving right now. That's, that's a good sign for me. Must be fr- brought forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. To receive it, you need the Holy Spirit. Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, my preaching were not, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Paul, was Paul smart? Was he intelligent? Did he know a lot of languages? Could he rely on his own human wisdom? Lots of people do. He did not. Uh uh. I didn't come to you with persuasive words of human wisdom. But in demonstration, there was a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. He also said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. There is a distinction between being born again and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you would, I have a few minutes left. Acts chapter 8. Would you turn there? Acts chapter 8. New Testament. Acts chapter 8. This is an example. I love to give the examples of what I'm saying if they're in the scriptures. I don't want you to just believe me. I want you to see that it's written for yourself. You can read this whole chapter today. The whole chapter is great. Of course it is. But I can only read two sections of it. Acts chapter 8, verses 4 through 8. <clears throat> this is after there was persecution in the church, brand new church. Persecution began to come. So what was happening was all the Christians were being scattered out of Jerusalem. It was kind of like God said, hey, didn't I tell you to leave Jerusalem? Go to Samaria and the uttermost parts of it. Why are you huddling about, you know? That's why I don't understand really big churches. It's like, come on. Split us up a little bit. Get us out there. It says, therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere. What were they doing? Preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. There, finally, we're getting to Samaria. And what did he preach? Christ to them. As I've said before, we can say, come to church. Is that then the message they need to hear? They just need to hear about Jesus. Just get to Jesus somehow. He preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Philip was not an apostle. He was a deacon. Okay? He was a deacon. Was he doing miracles? That's what the word says. You need to be a pastor. He uses anybody and everybody. But everybody responded to the message. They heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. So uh, power accompanied the gospel, didn't it? That's what we're talking about. Power accompanied the gospel. That's why I'm not afraid to pray for you if you come to me and lay hands on you. I can't do anything, but I know the name of Jesus can. And so I'm willing to pray. And we'll see what the Lord will do. He still does those things. But the point here is that people that responded to the gospel and power accompanied the gospel. But it goes on in verses 12 through 17 But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, They sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might, what? 
received the Holy Spirit. For as yet, he had not fallen upon none of them. Or he had not, he had fallen upon none of them. So, is there two separate things going on? Did they believe? Did they receive? But it indicates here that the Holy Spirit had not come upon them yet. So, am I giving you wrong doctrine? I'm giving you what the Bible says. They had only been baptized in the name of Jesus, of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. As I said, this is about baptisms. Water baptism, baptism of repentance, turning to the Lord, but also being filled. So maybe... Maybe you turned me off a half an hour ago or 40 minutes ago and said, well, I'm already, you know, I've been baptized and I, I'm already saved. So what? You just need to be reminded. You know, sometime today, I'm going to need to take my truck down and get it filled with gas. Because why? It runs on gas and it's almost on empty. Sometimes we just need to go to the filling station. Who is the filling station? Ephesians 5 tells us, be filled, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. He gives that to us. Let's all stand and pray. Should we sing today? I mean, should we? I mean, this is, this is the song that we would sing. You know, if we were being water baptized, you know, we would, I would want this song sung. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us your word and you show us the way. Lord, we just need to take the way. Sometimes we just go our own way. But Lord, you have given us this path to take. Lord, we thank you for your word today. And Lord, I just pray that you would fill your people today, tomorrow, this week with your spirit, Lord that we would be refilled, renewed, restored, revived, Lord, in your word and in your spirit. And Lord God, I do pray that you would remind us, Lord, that we ought to be having an attitude of gratitude throughout this day today and throughout tomorrow and the next week, Lord, and let it continue. We praise you and we thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen.